Ladies and gentlemen, let's turn on the sound. Boom, we got it. How you doing, everybody? Ladies Back here for game number two of the Perfect World Masters. It's Navi facing off against Vega Squadron. I'm Lyric, we're gonna be your caster for this one. Unfortunately, my co-caster could not be here. Still got uh, one more series, which I believe we'll be here for. Uh, I saw an interesting tweet as well that just happened. Um, Team Empire said, remaining. IDK fam. The first match against Vega got postponed because they play Navi. So it sounds like there's another Empire game that's supposed to be going on right now uh, against uh, against Vega. Um, for any of you guys that don't know, there's a lot of qualifiers that are happening right now. I, I think that there's been like a, a lot of sort of um, frustration Five seconds from the community remain. about the, the lack of communication about them or... You know the 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 problems that have come up with like sometimes games not being able to be fully casted i think the thing to keep in mind is that there are so many events that are happening right now that sometimes it's just not feasible particularly if the same teams tend to go towards the end of the event um so the game that is supposed to be going on right now it's uh the wca europe finals which would be vega versus empire um and that's supposed to be going on right now on a best of three, but it's not happening because there's just, uh, they have to play this other game. They have to play Navi right now. Um, and then the other Radiant thing that's going to happen is that after that, they have to play, the winner of this has to play Empire. So no matter what, we're going to have to be waiting around most likely for the Empire versus Vega squadron game to get completed. Um, like, I, I think that obviously everybody wants the system to be, um, you know better they want the system to work the way that they want it to uh, but I think everybody just needs to you know take a breath take a relaxing Five breath and remaining. you know just realize that whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen um, it's Dota we're not playing League of Legends that's something to be thankful for um, and we'll just move on from there you know what I'm saying it's all good all good in the hood don't trip chocolate chip so game number two we're into it now and Navi are going to open with a Disruptor Void combo in response to the Night Stalker and then Vengeful Spirit to follow. Interesting. I feel like this right here from Vega Squadron, it almost feels like um, they flipped the script and they're now playing the style of dota that navi was last game it, it doesn't have to be that way like it's still too early to tell in the draft but just these initial picks night stalker gives you the vision advantage disruptor and faceless void huge team fight advantage but can sometimes struggle to find initiation uh particularly if they lack vision which night stalker gives you so it's kind of like well what's gonna happen there the thing that i worry about is navi might just try and run you down they have an enchantress taken as their third pick and one of the ways that you can sometimes deal with night stalker is you just run at him and centaur warren a great hero at making that happen too if you don't have a blink dagger even he can help to find that initiation or help you find that initiation uh but you you get into the situation where previously seconds, night stalkers remaining. would build into an agonim scepter when they're playing the offlane uh nowadays even you sometimes remaining. see it although it's much more common that you get like an urn and then like a solar crest or uh, those random items but the thing that he does is he doesn't really provide the same level Radiant of value in a team back. fight as a disruptor or even an enchantress would so my thought looking at this draft is okay what happens if navi just try and end the game before night stalker can really even fully take advantage of his vision advantage that they have like he's always gonna have a little bit better vision but i don't know that's kind of my thought there like if, if they just try and get themselves ready for going high ground early it doesn't even Five matter it's just going remaining. down so let's see um morphling taken for vega aloha dance has an amazing morphling um i think he's pretty solid this game you obviously have to be worried about um like silences coming from the disruptor that that's the big issue uh Probably also the Dia team um, like glimpse to kill a, his replicate is kind of annoying also. Um, that's my two big thoughts there. I think the Disruptor by and large is pretty good against Morphling. Uh, obviously, if Morphling just gets out of control, 
then it's a big problem. But that's that's their only silence. Ten seconds they do remaining. have one more pick, most likely to be a Five mid. Five seconds remaining. The puck was already banned. I was actually going to say that I wouldn't have minded puck for Navi, but I decided to ban it out instead. Um, since Vega do have first pick. And Vega are also most likely going to be looking for a mid. Queen of Pain might be a way to go. It's a classic G hero. He loves this hero. I was looking at some of the info on it. Um, they've played it twice so far in the past week. And G has a 47 KDA. Uh, yeah, 47 KDA. Like, what? How is that even a thing? Mirana. Oh, this is another one of his classics. G playing Mirana. Uh, I first met G when I went to the, the Star Ladder uh, I League season, Star City Season 3, I think. Um, oh, Broodmother. Oh my god, Deadly Broodmother. Let's see it. Let's go. Um, but I was going to say that I, I first met... They, oh god, I don't, they actually don't have an answer for this. I think Navi won. I, I, oh god, maybe sick doom mid. Scorched Earth is like, Ugh, but okay. Anyways, what I was gonna say is that I first, I, I first saw G. I didn't really like meet him that much, um, like introduce myself to him or anything. But he like, when they were playing, he had this like dark jacket on. I don't remember if it was leather or not. And he had like these long pants. This is when he had like this sort of really long hair. And these kind of intense glasses and a little bit of like a stubbly beard and he just looked like this sort of i don't know what's the word for it like a um like some kind of crazy magician out of sorcery and like he would just like walk forward with his like long hair sweeping behind him and his dark coat on and be like it's a stormy night when g was playing queen of pain and took down uh, rebels from on high it's like you're on gray joy from the books you know what i'm saying that's what g's like when he plays that queen of pain it's terrifying um one of the better mid laners out of the cis region i'm excited to see him play the marana here all right game two underway now and i am curious to see how this brood mother deals with uh, or rather how uh, Vega deal with the Broodmother because uh, I would be terrified to play Prepare against Brood battle. this game. So Disruptor heading out across the map. He'll place down a couple of early wards. Uh, Real U heads out with the classic 400 HP on the Morphling. Slayer's got himself some boots. He's just gonna stand on it. <laughs> so everything looks. Oh, okay. So it is an afterlife night stalker. All right, that makes me like this even less. I was sort of like caught up in my talking about other stuff. Um, the fact that Slayer is playing Doom. E. You know what this might be? I think that they're going to play this the China Doom style. Where he goes like early tranquils and just runs at mid. In the meantime though, Roger moving forward with General. And they get some hoof stomp action going maybe. They get the stun beforehand. General in trouble here. General, what are you doing my man? He might end up falling if he's not careful. They actually end up being able to get away, but man, that was a lot of damage. He will have the salve afterwards. All right. Let's see how this goes. The rotation from Roger is he is going to contend with Slayer, trying to mess with their ability to take those creeps. He can just come in, steal one away, and be a bit of a turd. Top lane. General went for the pump fake on the hook stomp. Mm -hmm. 
But this is going to be where the real battle occurs, I think. And it's going to be like Roger trying to protect his creep. Oh my god, did he really just do this? Oh my god, the hook stop. Oh, Roger. Oh my god, that was beautiful. He like, he baited him into chasing his centaur a little bit. And then Roger's like, yeah, you're not getting away from here. The TP almost was enough, but not quite. Uh, Morphling does need to be a little bit careful against general here in this top lane, particularly once you get more points into double edge. Um, like one hoof stomp double edge could probably find a kill. And not to mention the fact that you're going to have the centaur, the second centaur around as well. Deadly. Thank you, Light of Heaven. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, this is... Hmm. Yeah, you gotta get the hell out of there. He's just gonna be ran at constantly. Lucky find. Double damage! So, this is a problem. Um, the Seder is the one that Doom wants to get, but he's actually not a quick enough, even with boots, to keep up with the Enchantress. And... Well, look at this dodge. He's going to be able to eat it finally. But now he stole Mud Golem and, well, looking for the body blocks. Roger, are you kidding me? He is just putting the hurt right now to Slayer. They're forced to run the curry away. Everybody needs to get away from Roger. Roger's the most terrifying hero on the map right now. <laughs> yeah, that is... Quite a, an interesting little engagement that we see. Now, the plus side for Slayer is that he is going to have the Sator now, so he's got that uh, HP regen. He's got the, the blast to throw out as well. But with Roger heading back up towards the top, he's actually going to be able to... Oh, this is so good, too. He's got the one stone, then he's going to deny the Mud Golem, and then has two more to follow. All right, no, he's just going to have two. All right, well, we will have three stuns at least. That was the goal. Crystallize finds the kill on the afterlife. They turn on to take down Sineko as well. Meanwhile, top lane, they're still diving in for this. There's the hoof stomp. They try and take down General. He's still a liver, though, and Zayak instead is going to be the one that falls himself. General comes back in, just going to throw out the double edge to the face, maybe, possibly. Doesn't even need to. Double kill for Roger. Well, there were two kills down bottom happening at the same time. Dyer's structures are fortified. And G still going to be pushed out of this lane here. Look at this damage. Force the leap. Get the hell away. Now it's fine again. Tower is under attack. Well, level four for both of these teams. So you need to be careful. Aloha will certainly just dive for the centaur. But in the meantime, they do have the double. Look at how much damage that does. Likewise, though, one waveform, and well, it goes to show that Enchantress still capable of being taken down. So they are trying to get towards those Tranquil Boots that we were talking about, or maybe he just ends up going for something else later. But I think that he really does need to help out G in the mid lane, because the Tier 1 tower is already down at 4 minutes. Not to mention the fact that Roger is just constantly running in. And, well, with another two stuns here, this is, I think, a little bit too hard to kill. He's got ten stick charges. I, I don't think that they can kill him. Or maybe they can? No, he's, yeah, he's got twelve stick charges now. But Dendi Broodmother causing issues. She has six... 16 CS right now. They'll have the clap. They're trying to take down the Wild Wing Ripper. And the real you again, playing this Morphling to perfection. Still stuck with only a ring of health and well, the highest CS on his team and the rest of the Radiant really isn't getting that much with the exception of Dendi. Dendi is going to need to do a lot this game. He's already done a lot, but he needs Radiant to do more. Are scanning. Clap comes out again. General with three points up in double edge. It'd be a very easy kill if they can find Zayek. 
Genji pump fake in the Starfall. Still the vision back and forth, Zayak may be in trouble. Went for the hoof stomp, doesn't want to go for it fully. Oh, what happened? I thought I saw it, didn't see his boots for a second. He has hoof stomp available. Turns to fight. Almost. Oh! No, nope, can't do it. Ah, just look at how much damage that does, though. Like, he would need more levels Radiant's to be able to contend with the brute at all. Another hoof stomp and a runaway for general. He'll be able to escape. Roger's kind of slowed down in effectiveness. Um, with the medallion, they can think about going back for, like, taking down Roche soon. That might be a pretty good option. I actually have a medallion on Dendi as well. So just heavily pressing for that physical damage. Afterlife in the meantime versus Crystallize. We haven't looked at this lane a ton. But Afterlife's been able to get the better of him so far. 25 and 4 versus 22 and 2. That being said, they bring in Dendi. And Afterlife is going to die. The power of Broodmother with those rotations. You slowly start to build up the webs towards each of these lanes. And then just take over. Up stomp. Lots of damage. Aloha, though. He's already used all his sick charges. And is just going to be back again. Star Storm, Roger. Not gonna be a liver that time. They didn't take out the sentry, so they're gonna need to place another one here. Uh, there is still gonna be vision maintained by the Radiant for a little while at the very least. And Crystallize attempting the pull. <laughs> Come on, dude. You got this. Alright. Gee! The hoof stomp up here top and they kill off Zayek. Okay. Meanwhile, the Brood Mother mid taking a lot of damage as they tried to make the rotation work. Seneko is going to be able to get away as well, it looks like. Slayer trying to chase and, well, he actually still finds Seneko. He does have another Infernal Blade here. It connects. The kinetic field is laid down. Afterlife still chasing. Has the Void level 3 and, well, they find the kill. <laughs> While this is happening, Nobby Moving around the map, Dendi doing a good tower. job of spreading attack. out these spiders to keep vision around the map while they take the tier 1 tower. Now they see the rotation coming in from the Night Stalker. They're going to play it a little bit more safe, most likely, and ready to back out if they see any other rotations coming. Roger is still allowed to play just so aggressively in this jungle. And double Dark Troll Summoner. Oh, there's, there's a chance that something could happen here. Oh. All right, that troll is going to take the second blast, and that probably keeps Roger alive. But they do take one of the creeps on his way out. General trying to run away is still going to get chased. Slayer is diving for this. Realizes that he can't actually make that happen, and oh, we'll back out. So, bottom lane, Afterlife also in trouble. Dendi is chasing. They've got the crystallize. Faceless Void as well to finish off the kill since there were so many heroes that were committed up top. Nobody there to help out bottom. Tier 1 tower taken. And Dendi continuing his role now. And if he wants to, very likely you can think about running back for a Radiance. Uh, it's not a bad game for it. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are They need Roger to keep doing stuff for him. Oops, stop. Uh, really, you? He's actually kind of in a awkward spot there, but with the replicate already in the area and the double centaurs that show up, four centaurs in this lane, they will finally call it off. You just need to be careful. Morphling is ready to replicate to this. Uh, doing a good job. Backs it out at the last moment. G knows that Dendi is there. He took some spiders with him on his way out. Regen rune for general. Again, Dendi pushing, but. Oh. Oh, <laughs> run away, buddy. Oh, my goodness. That's scary.
still, the person left alone throughout most of this has been the Faceless Void. And he is going for the Mask of Madness now, and eventually the Lincoln Sphere. Top lane. They got the Static Storm down. Uh, caught onto the Morphling. Unfortunately, Morphling able to get the Strength Form off, and now he turns it back around, takes down Seneko. So the real you just realizing that something could have happened there, and they can't find the kill. Roger now in trouble, gets the silence. He does have 10 stick charges, but not nearly enough. And General's gonna be forced to run away as well. I gotta say, this Vega Squadron team is looking quite good. I, I think that they got this. Real U's gonna back out, doesn't have stick charges or mana for a waveform. The cheek on trying to man up. Arrow, not Radiant going to connect. Zach, just going to run away. Hoof stomp, Fire's not there. Ah, they do have another jump if they want to use it from Crystallize in six seconds. I think that the Venge is going to die. He blocks off the way again. Well, oh, to no avail. He still goes down. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I, I really think that Vega have done a great job of dealing with this brood. They, they knew what they could give up at various points in the game the to not be too concerned about it. And now they're in this great position. Like, look at this. Denny is going to go forward here. He might kill off one, but he's going to lose his life. And she is going to get a ton of spiders. They, they're certainly up, but they're not snowballing enough right now, Navi, to, to make this worth it. Morphlane is going to get out of control. As long as he doesn't kill himself to creeps. Not to mention that Marana is starting to catch up as well. I think that if you're Navi right now, you need to switch up your game plan and go for, like, I don't know, it's tough. I was gonna say, like, later game build, but even then, their heroes just don't deal with what Vega are doing late game, regardless. Uh, you can think about, like, eventually getting into, like, Bloodthorn for Brood, but even that's not great because, like, Morphling's just gonna have Manta style by that point. Bottom lane, Navi are setting up, but the counter initiation is gonna come out now, and if Dendi goes down right here, they pull back in one, it's Slayer. They have eyes on Afterlife as well. They don't wanna go in too far because now they realize that the rest of Vega is there. Snako, Static Storm could be big if they get it, but no Slayer, he walks forward, he gets it down. They don't catch anybody. The Chronos here though, that's pretty decent, but they don't have enough follow-up. This is not working. This is going to be a ton of kills going the way of Vega Squadron. General also in trouble. Can they catch him? They do have Swa, they don't have Swap. Very close to it, but not quite enough. Good decision by Navi to back out there. That would have gone so badly otherwise, but they use Chronosphere, they use Static Storm, and they lose their Faceless Void. The prize is mine. Indicative of the state of this game right now. That yes, you can talk about like Brood having a strong laning phase, but now, where do you go? Because Morphling is keeping on farming, and that is not a situation you want to be in. Well, 14 minutes in, what was once a, well, it wasn't ever a huge lead, but it was a somewhat good lead. It, the experience is now back to even. Smoked up Broodmother to go in and steal Roshan. You don't expect this play, but it'll work. As long as Roger doesn't die. Like, they do a ton of damage to this. Vega, in the meantime, is going to be able to soak up experience on the Vengeful Spirit while Morphling farms jungle and the rest of Vega were looking for a pickoff. They, they weren't expecting this play. This is really good by Navi. Like, this Roche is going to allow them to... Uh, probably finish off a lot of these other tier two towers. But the bigger thing about it is that the next Roche is gonna be up around the time that they're wanting to siege high ground and they'll be able to have cheese with that one as well. The question is, is it gonna be enough? 
to deal with more points. And I'm not convinced yet. TP out. Easy peasy. There might have been an opportunity there for a glimpse, but I'm sure Seneko was looking and he just couldn't get it. Dyer's top tower is so Morphling now. Uh, going to be able to finish off his link or his ultimate orb. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Right. Tower taken. Radiant's bottom tower is so under like we're attack. talking about the pressure for the Radiant's tier two towers. While well, that's happening, Vega are going to try and push for themselves. I don't want to give something for nothing if you can avoid it. And Seneko boldly going Radiant's where no disruptor has gone before has into everybody. Is he looking to try and like break TPs with a glimpse or something? They definitely want to Dyer's take down the top, top tier two tower. Attack. Double catapult strat. It's in full effect. His afterlife is ready to dive Seneko. Yeah. This guy is dead. Structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under All right. Attack. Tier 2 tower taken top. top tower Meanwhile, Vega attack. gonna look to do the same. Or at least force some people to rotate back. Radiance the real you has Lincoln Spear completed, just not fully delivered to him yet. It's inside his stash. General Blink Dagger is there. They're gonna charge forward. Gets the hoof stomp. Stun is there as well. They have a Chrono Spear. Doesn't catch Aloha Dance. The real you walks into it, but it doesn't matter. He was able to get everything off anyways. There was never a chance for a kill. Really, it was just to look for the Vengeful Spirit, and well, they will get that kill. Eventually. But that's Chrono used for the Venge. Granted, they do defend their Choo Choo Tower. Oh, yes. My waters rise. Tide is oh, strength form. They got him. Well done. So that's a big kill. Finding that kill in a Morphling right there changes a lot of the complexion of the game because him not being able to like farm up this entire time. Navi may be able to get some damage onto the tier three tower as well. Oh, they swap back in general. Let's nice play there. I'll show you what happens if you hook stomp me. And Dendi, in spite of the fact that they're having gonna have to deal with the Morphling, that, that Roche play in the Aegis take means that, you know, it's, it's not going to be likely that they can push high ground with this Aegis, but next one, very likely. And even stealing away some of his creeps here. They drop a ward. They see him. And he's done. They be in trouble. They have a shrine as well there to keep him alive. Snako shows up. He does ha have Static Storm Dendi. Going to be able to get away. He had Aegis anyways for another minute and a half. Nice glimpse. And that's the other thing that we were talking about during the draft that kind of sucks to play against Disruptor as the Morphling because your replicate's just going to go down regardless. And Amidas done for the Enchantress. Also has that plus six to all stats talent. On top of Treads. Pretty soon she's going to start dealing some decent damage. Doom with a classic buckler. We love to see this. Building towards the hand of Midas. Oh, Vega Squadron know what their game plan is. Hold out as long as possible and make sure that they don't lose Rax. Eventually dominate Navi late game. Let the real you carry you. Are scanning. Four staff Radiant's halfway to completion for the centaur. The Aegis is down as well. So where do we see Radiant's them going now? I, I feel like 
Navi kind of just need to wait until that next Roche. Maybe they could try and push for the tier two tower in the bottom lane, but it's not easy. And crystallize with the DD and a Chronosphere. Are they going to try and kill him? Just playing right on the outside edges of this vision right now. And, well, he just walks into a big whole payload of trouble. We'll die underneath the tower. And, well, actually, Disruptor, he is forced to complete this TP. And yeah, they're bringing in the rest of them. And they're going to be able to catch Slayer. They stuck around for a little bit too long there. Um, the Slayer is going to be brought down. I, I think that the goal was like, okay. Oh, this is a nice bit of spiders. Can they get him? Oh, no. They need some more. He doesn't have any mail or anything. I think the thought there behind Vega Squadron was like, all right, maybe we can try and find a kill as Disruptor is TPing back in. They stuck around for a little bit too long. So 11 to 11, only a 2,000 net worth lead right now for Na'Vi. But it is, again, one of those game states, to me at least, where it feels like as the game goes later, Vega Squadron becomes stronger. You're just now starting to get into these other items. And any time that Navi can kill this Morphling, they're going to take full advantage if possible. Jump down. They've got him caught for a moment. The glimpse away. Whoa! They had him. What? They, they had him. Am I missing some? Oh, the, the Lincolns, they wanted to pop it. Attack. All right, yeah, Radiant yeah, that makes sense, top. but oh, it hurts. It hurts a lot. You you really wanted that yes. kill. Roger somehow is going to escape Get this. And in fact, they might even end up turning it around. He's getting so much heals right now. Is he really going to live? Okay, he's not going to live. Well, jump forward, has the catch on to that vengeful spirit as Afterlife is trying to run away in the trees. Radiant are scanning. They scan, they realize he's still in the area. Bench is going to be brought Dyer's down. Meanwhile, bottom tower does get taken by Dendi, who's split pushing this whole time. These fights are so chaotic. Afterlife, is he actually going to be able to escape from this? Looks like the answer is no. That ward placed down, they have vision Radiant's over him, and. Well, nowhere left to go. Man, that failed kill bottom. To try and take down that morphling. Like you can understand wanting to break the Lincolns, but a little bit of a failure of communication and Navi they're kicking themselves after that one. Well, in the meantime. The Midas has been completed for Doom, as well as that 80 bonus Devour Gold. So his GPM is about to start to skyrocket. There's also a DD bottom. Don't know if they want to take that or not. Might leave it for G, uh, or the Morphling either, or I guess the G has the bottle, so that makes sense. But as the game goes on, and the real you gets the farm, we do start to have to ask ourselves, what is the long-term answer? Probably Aghanims on Disruptor, but that is like such a far away Time thing from happening. Because like, once Morphling gets BKB, he doesn't care about anything, right? All right. Allies disappear. Bottom lane, Marana. As well as Zayek getting set up. Seneko is over here. They can turn this around rather rapidly. They are instead going to go for Seneko, and now they realize he's there. Quick jump forward. And that's a quick kill. G looks to be going down. Oh, ho, 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 the swap away. Dendi's chasing, though. Can he get out of there? G, Manta, run, run, run. Does have leap again in two, but not going to happen. They take down Seneko, but they pay for it. Agadim Scepter is going to be the pickup for Afterlife. He is going to die here most likely. 
it turns any time. Oh, hey, not gonna get there in time. Nicely done. Good TP out. The Blink Brood, it's kind of been coming back into fashion a little bit. And with Roche available, this is actually, again, one of those big moments. You know, with this timing and the fact that Marana's dead, I actually think that Navi can think about pushing high ground with this. It's tough, it's not easy, but it's possible. Roche is gonna fall, and Vega a little bit too late to the party. Morphine does have his E-Blade. So Roger is probably just going to explode in these fights. He might go instead for Disruptor, it's tough to tell. But this is where, like, if Morphine leaves a replicate behind him and then goes in for a quick waveform, E-Blade, uh, you know, Adaptive Strike combo, it's pretty quick and uh, it'll, you know, kill pretty much anybody off. Like, Disruptor just now has enough gold for his Glimmer Cape. I, I think he needs to get that. Ooh, Aghanim Scepter, though. Aghanim Scepter and a BKB. All right. Okay. Centaur switched it up. He even bought the four staff recipe, but then realized, you know what? I don't, I can't do that. I need to go for an Aghanims. I Navi are itemizing really well to deal with this uh, E-Blade that's come out from the Morph lane. And now it's just sort of a question of who has the better initiation. And naturally, the Night Soccer team will have the advantage there. But Navi are, are not out of this by any stretch of the imagination. All right. Crystallize. Getting set up to join his team with the Lincolns and the Mask of Madness done. Cheese on hand. Dyer's They've got a lot of lives, and it's time for Navi to siege. BKB is there, like we were talking about, as well as the Blink. He can jump forward onto any of these fools if he so desires, not to mention that 70 damage talent. Moran is still a little ways away from her damage talent. He's another full level before it's going to be there, not to mention the BKB. Buyback status also. Only the Morphling has it. Radiant's bottom but tower is under attack. With Morphling threatening the split push, everybody is forced back. And Vega can continue to do Vega things. Invisibility. Invis rune on void with the diffusal blade and Dendi right behind him. This could be big. I mean, that is another thing to consider is that Diffusal Blade against Morphling is quite good. So before, like, you could just strength form out of it, but now even that's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right, Void looking for an opening here. Does he catch him? Yeah. I think it's too tough. All right, Crystallize ready to jump. Get in the high ground. Trying to get somebody to go onto the Marana. All right, they're baiting out a reaction. They go forward on the Marana again. Backing out. A swap away. Chronosphere though on to four. Oh, crystallized. Smelly blood and takes full advantage. That was done on to two. They lose Denny with a buyback immediately from the Morphlane. And now they've caught themselves the Brood. Oh, Navi, you need to be careful now. They can't get caught out here. Another great kinetic field. And, well, they're trying to chase, trying to find the kill. The hoof stump comes out. Arrow going to connect on a crystallize. They got him with the real U. Is he going to end up going down? Far too much damage. The strength form barely able to get away with that waveform. Now G in trouble. Dendi is just so hard to deal with right now. And the E-Blade was up. He might have been able to save his buddy there with it, but it doesn't end up happening. He E-Blades now Dendi. The back out Slayer tries to turn, tries to fight, but I think Navi are doing this too well. Zayek is going to go down now. Roger picks up the kill. Two are dead. You don't have G for a very long time, but likewise, Crystallize is gone. Real you still playing his way out of there, but a triple kill for Roger. He's not going to stop. This guy's going to keep on going. They break the Lincoln Spear, still dealing these little peck pecks of right clicks and the damage being dealt. But it looks like finally Roger is going to have to stop his spree and retreat. 
Magnetic Field to save the day. 8,000 gold lead right now for Na'Vi. And the final tally ends up being about a 2,400 gold swing, but most importantly, these buybacks. The Morphling and that Doom. Having them used in that last fight. Gotcha. Man, the pony hits hard. Time is money. And next going for the Dragon Lance. Yeah, Navi are hitting it. They're making this work. And I can't emphasize enough like how important it was getting that Roche. It stopped the momentum that was going into the way of Vega. And well, now they're sort of trying to deal with this push that's coming. Granted, it is still the tier three tower standing. Navi weren't able to get that, which means there's no access to shrines. And it does feel like still Navi have to be the ones on the aggressive because late game Vega squadron becomes a problem, but that window has opened up a lot. It's no longer like get a ton of stuff done right now. They can they can sit on their sit back a little bit and, and get set for that next set of items because it's coming soon, right? Like the fusible blade's already done. The Manta style is getting there in a decent timing for crystallize. Dendi in the meantime is going for a fusible blade himself. And they're just controlling them. The plus side right now is that uh, the Dyer have been able to move out of their base and start pressuring down this bottom lane. Um, also, Night Stalker is, what, 500 gold away from picking up his Aghanim Scepter? Oh. He tanks the gank, Zayek does. TP away from Afterlife. They hook stomp what they think is the Night Stalker, but in Radiant's fact, bottom tower it is, is under not. Attack. Huh. I don't remember if you can replicate to this illusion or not. I don't think you can. Good news, everybody. My co-caster is going to be here for the next game. Whatever that ends up being, so... You won't have to deal with the solo cast too much longer. <laughs> it's been a good time, though. It's kind of neat because uh, every time I get excited, and there's like a big moment. My dog starts going crazy next to me. She is adorable. All right, 21 to 15. 18,000 net worth lead for that brood mother. And building towards the salt cuirass next, it's 15,000 gold lead as well. Almost level 25 for Dendi. He really has been the man of this match so far. Broodmother has a way of doing that. And the Night Stalker, level 17. Ag's done. Fifteen on Disruptor is gonna be there soon. Connect feel cooldown always feels pretty good to me. I don't think that the Thunderstrike oh, yes. matters, like, at all right now. Alright, round two. Let's see what happens. Who can they find? Where can they go? And will the real you live through it all? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, replicate away. Yeah. Middle tower yep, has yep, fallen. Yep. The thing that's nuts about that is that they were able to chase across Dyer's the whole map while attack. they still took out the tier 3 tower in the mid lane. Top tower like, is under attack. that's how you know that you're in the lead. <laughs> you, you don't need everybody Dyer's there at the same time. Now they fallen. can take down the shrine. Roche is going to respawn in just under two minutes. They want to go on him. Ah, uh, Dendi gets doomed, but just gonna run away again. Charged, four staffed, the whole kit and caboodle, he's gone. 
Vega again struggling to figure out what they can do going forward here. They do have that Axe Scepter. They end up hitting on a Bambi. Okay, Enchantress in trouble. Full combo comes out. Not quite enough as of yet. He's actually going to be able to turn around. General, Roger, they combo together to keep that Enchantress alive. And now the real you in trouble. Going to go down. Mega kill streak for Enchantress. And just when it was looking good for a moment, Vega Squadron again caught. Again killed. And again, High Ground gonna be sieged. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Barracks now falling with no recourse. It's 60 seconds without a morphling. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. And this is the problem that you run into sometimes with Night Stalker is... I, I don't know how many times I've seen an Aghanim Scepter get picked up and then they just lose all of their towers. Like, you can see the enemy coming at you and killing you slowly. Damage reduction from that stampede means that they're not going to be able to find the kill. The second lane of barracks is down. And Na'Vi on their way to evening this up and putting themselves in a position to play one game for a spot in the finals against Empire. 18,000 net worth lead. And not looking like it's going to slow down anytime soon. And we, we've talked about it this whole game, the threat eventually of the Morphling coming online, but we just haven't seen it. The real Yu has not been able to stay alive, and with Roshan going down one final time, Vega Squadron going to have to try and extend this game out as long as possible. All right, Vega Squadron now defending the Radiant High Grounds. <laughs> I think that they can kill... Oh, God, look at this, though. Vanish. Like, they see a lot of people. Drop a ward down. Hurricane Pike. They need a big fight here. They, they need something huge. Uh, there's a Marana here as well. That's the Replicate. Arrow connects onto Dendi. G. Sniperino. Can they get him, though? Stun. They have a swap. This is a very awkward spot. Nami are going to go to the high ground and now defend Vega Squadron's high ground against Vega Squadron. They managed to do... Did they do a Spiderling? What got doomed? Or was it a Lincoln? I don't even know what the hell happened right there. Slayer's in trouble, though. Dendi turns around, turns to fight. There is nowhere left to go. Oh, the real you. Your base is not even safe anymore. He is going to die. They get to do with the Chrono Spear. Wait, buy his back, but what are you really gonna do with that one? The full barracks are gonna drop. General standing tall as they take down the rest of them, and Mega Creep's only a short way away. Well played, and GG are called. And we are going to a game number three, ladies and gentlemen. Navi versus Mega Squadron coming up in just a few here. Radiant All right, so final thoughts on this game. Uh, Vega Squadron, I'd like to see them go back to what worked well last game. Um, yeah, I think, I think Na'Vi just probably, it's, it's probably also worth banning Roger heroes. I think that's the other big thing. Um, he's just, he's, he's really good on this Enchantress. Like I think back to that early kill where he just like, completely destroyed doom um like the, roger was able to bait him into moving too far out of position and then roger killed him and um yeah i think take that out that that's probably the best play to go all right ladies and gentlemen we'll be back in just a little bit with game number three it's navi versus vega squadron i'm lyrical and i'm going to be joined by aosin for this next one so stick around that one should be sure to be solid i'll see y'all in a few for game number three